two oscillators. Um, the first oscillator is decently normal. The one thing that it has that's interesting is it has a triangle wave that you can tilt to sawtooth or ram. So it kind of has its own non-resonant filter in a way. Uh, and you can make some interesting things with LFOs, etc. And then it has a square wave out. We all know what it sounds like, so I'm not going to demo that. <laughs> the other part that's more interesting is this oscillator. So, uh, let's make sure that it's... So this oscillator, kind of a sine wave, and then it has pitch multipliers which are sort of analog pitch shifters. So you can make overtones. And the idea is that you can do essentially analog FM, kind of ish. So you can modulate these overtones with each other. And what's interesting about this is You can get, if you loop them all in a feedback loop. You can make it so that it responds differently to different frequencies. Just then, just shaping the sound. And of course, you can just modulate the individual overtones with whatever you want. So like... But yeah, it's very good at creating chaos. If that's what you like, it's what I like. So the idea with this synth essentially was had a bunch of nice analog, super nice on their own, and I had a bunch of semi broken circuit board bent toys, also super nice on their own, but there was nothing in between. Uh, so I want to make a synth that can go from just sounding like a regular lush analog to go all the way to brokenness of the circuit bent. And I think I think this succeeded fairly well. So like everything is made to be stupid and extreme. So let's see. The LFOs all go from I think it's 500 hertz to 12 minutes. I don't even remember. Let's see. <laughs> So they can all be used as drone oscillators. And they can also be used, obviously, for just like if you want to make a ridiculously long ambient set that is one LFO transition on a song, you can. Uh, ADSR is the same thing. It goes from, I guess, I think it's like a kilohertz 
when you have it in repeat mode to infinite pause. So you can just pause the transition anywhere. Uh, so that's fine. sample and hold and the filter is kind of weird it's a four pole filter the output is always on the fourth pole but the resonance the feedback can be selected to be on the second third or fourth pole so like if we do just a standard four pole Three and two. And what's interesting there is like, so since the output is always on the fourth, but the resonance can be on two, three, or four, if you feed the output, back into itself, you can actually have two resonant peaks, one on the fourth and one on the second or third. Uh, also, this is low pass only, but if you throw the output into the inverter, mix it with the dry signal and throw them back into itself, you can make it kind of a ghetto high pass, which it's not necessarily useful as a high pass, but it makes a, a more interesting sound, in my opinion. Um, the VCAs are, VCA1 has a de-thumper, so it's, you know, it will prohibit harsh transitions, so you don't get that click. Um, VCA2 does not, so you're going to use it for drum stuff, like percussive stuff. And VCA2 works like a ring modulator, so any negative signals will get uh, rectified, so you can do modulation that way. Um, multiple mixer, preamp, slash inverter, external signals, or if you just need to flip a signal. Um, MIDI to CV, it's either, either MIDI or USB. Um, oh yeah, voltage controlled switch. That can be kind of fun to play with for various stuff. Here's another quantizer, quantizing, and the ribbon controller. So the ribbon controller is standard ribbon controller. Let's do this. So, but it has a duophonic, it has two outputs, low and high for the finger. So that's quantized. Underneath it is a pressure ribbon. So you can use, let's say we can do cut off, for instance. That's pretty much what this thing is all about. But surely not made for ease of control. Um, again, since like the LFOs, you got 12 minutes, 500 hertz. Yep. 
just have to learn how to use it. 